Morning. Friday. Today is February 5th and I hope everybody's having a good week. Today we're going to talk about wheels. I always have people rolling up on me, <laughs> literally, asking what size wheel is that or what bottom bracket do you use for those and what size hub is that and so I'm not repeating myself. When we go into the shop, we're gonna cut it short right there and see what's happening with Peak Cycles. Here we are in the shop, and today we're gonna to talk about wheels. Wheel sizes, wheel diameters, wheel widths. We're gonna talk about hubs, which hubs work, which hubs don't. Talk about bottom brackets, which bottom brackets work, which ones don't. Talk about offset cogs versus standard cogs. And Believe it or not, there's no duplicate wheels on this table. And that's how many different combinations there are. This video is dedicated to those who are tired of spending money on parts and components and it just doesn't work. So we're gonna clear the table, start with the smallest size wheel and diameter and work our way up. So let's go ahead and get things started. So we're gonna start with the three inch wheel or 80 millimeter wheel, it's the same difference, 80 millimeters, three inch. People use both terms. And they're known as the original wide wheel. There were no four inch or five inch, or at least they weren't readily available. And the most commonly used setup for three inch wide wheels would be 26 by threes. Then you've got the 24 by three, normally used in a staggered situation on a rear wheel, but I've seen people use 24 front and back, looks great. And then we have the 29, one of the newest three inch wide wheels, usually used as a front wheel in a staggered situation, but again, dual 29s look great too. As for hubs, I'm gonna show you a close-up of the Nexus 3, which is very commonly used, and this Sturmy Archer here, which is a SRC3. Give you close-ups of that. Sturmy Archer, SRC3. This hub will be used for three inch or four inch wide wheels. However, I'm told that for four inch wide wheels, that it is unsafe to use these offset cogs on this hub. You can use them all day long on Nexus 3. However, from my understanding, the torque and tension from these cogs can ruin the internals of the hub. Now, as for me, I've been using these on Sturmy Archers, even the wide hubs, all day long, no issues. So if you do it, that's on you. Just letting you know. The reason why I like these hubs is because they're beautiful. Nice big wide flange, you can drill them out for thicker gauge spokes. Have them polished out to look chrome. Sturmy Archer. A couple more things I want to touch on in regards to this hub is one, it's set up for coaster brakes, which is nice if you want to deal with disc brakes. And secondly, the dropout spacing. Both this, the Sturmy Archer, and the Nexus 3 are set up for pretty much most of your over-the-counter frames. This one is at a 116 millimeters wide, whereas the Nexus 3 is 120 millimeters wide. Not much difference. And again, both of these hubs should slide into most of your over-the-counter frames. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Nexus 3. And here we have the Nexus 3 hub with this shifter bell housing mounted to the outside of your dropout. Little calibration marker there. Pretty straightforward coaster brake. And if there's one thing I can tell you about this bell housing is that Allen screw right there. That's how you tighten it down. You can strip it out by over tightening. So go hand tight with your Allen. Be gentle. And it'll hold. That's it. Nexus 3 pretty much in a nutshell. Going forward in the video, we're going to focus on the Nexus. We're not going to talk about the Sturmy too much for a couple of different reasons. One, the Sturmy isn't as readily available as the Nexus. The Nexus you can find pretty much at any bike shop, online, eBay. They're out there. Price-wise, pretty relative. They run about $100 each, complete with the shift unit. The biggest reason why we're going to focus on the Nexus is because it's been proven to withstand this offset cog, which is required to move up to the next wheel size. So... Let's go ahead, bring up the four inch wide hoops, keep it moving. Moving on to the next size up in hoop size, this is a four inch wide hoop, 24 by four. This is a 29 by four. I don't have a 26 by four in the shop, but it's relatively the same thing, just a 26 inch diameter. When you set it side by side to the three inch wide wheel here, you can see pretty much one inch difference. 
And as mentioned, when you're going from the three inch wide wheel to four inch, it is gonna require this offset cog. Here it is in a nutshell. Three inch wide, flat, standard cog. When you go four inch wide, you're gonna pull that cog off. It's just a little snap ring in there. Install this, and what that does is it pushes your chain line out, giving you more clearance between the rim and your tire. And I know I've heard people say, oh, I've done that without the offset cog on four inch wide. That's fine. If you don't want your chain line going skewed and you want a nice chain line going straight back with plenty of clearance for your tire and your rim, go with the offset cog. Quick recap, three inch wide, Nexus three, standard cog. Four inch wide, Nexus three, offset cog. Five inch wide, let's go ahead and take a look. One of the big daddy hoops here, basically these are five inch wide hoops. This is a 24 by five. 26 by 5. This is also a 26 by 5 and I have it up here for a reason which I'm going to go over with you in just a moment. As for the hubs required for these wide wheels you're going to have to go with the Sturmy Archer here. This is the SXRK3 and this is the only hub that will work with these wider wheels outside of this single speed right here. The coaster single speed. That's why I have this up here. But if you want gears this is it. The other hubs I showed you are not going to work. That Nexus is not going to work. That other Stormy Archer, it's not going to work. This is the hub. The other thing is that frames. How many frames are out there that can accept this? This is a 170 millimeter wide dropout spacer. There aren't many frames over the counter that can accept this. Most of the frames that are running wide wheels and hubs like this are custom frames. If you don't go with a peak frame, most likely another fabricator out there. I think we're ready to move on to bottom brackets. Now we're going to talk about what bottom bracket and width will work with what wheel size. Let's keep it moving. Bottom brackets. Ready for this? <laughs> Still with me? Meanwhile, I did sit in front of each hoop, the hub scenario we just discussed. So this is the SA170, which is required for the 5-inch wide hoop. We have our offset cog, which you'll install to the Nexus 3 for your 4-inch wide hoops. And then you have your Nexus 3 with your standard cog, or you can use the offset cog with this setup and the 3-inch wide hoop. 3-inch, 4-inch, 5-inch. Moving on to bottom brackets, I'm going to start with bottom bracket shells. Again, there's three different sizes of those. This is your standard 2 and 3 quarter inch wide bottom bracket shell, which is most of your over-the-counter frames. And you've got 100 millimeters and 120 millimeters. I basically fabricate my frames accordingly. I communicate with the client, find out what size wheels and tires they're using, and then I use the appropriate bottom bracket shell. As for bottom brackets themselves, there's basically two different styles. You have your square tapered or European style, square tapered spindle there, or your eight spline American or BMX style, eight spline. Now we're gonna talk about sizes. And the three inch, we're gonna start with the three inch wide hoop. And your European, we're gonna go with 127 millimeters, which is basically the widest before you start getting into these super wides. Or you're gonna go with the five inch or five and a half inch American BMX style. That's for three inch wide. Four inch wide, you're gonna go with 100 millimeters. Or six inch wide American style. And lastly, <laughs> this is a profile spindle. This thing's eight inches wide. They don't even make these anymore. Jack at Lawless Bicycles, he does these eight spline spindles up to seven inches wide, which is plenty for this setup. The difference between the bottom brackets is usually preference. It's going to limit you on crank sets one way or the other. You're gonna see something you like, and it's gonna be like, oh, that's square tapered. I have eight spline or vice versa. So read the fine print. Eight spline, square tapered. Now we're gonna roll all this up on the table with the hubs, the bottom bracket, the spindles, and the hoops. And we're gonna have it all pop up on the screen for you so you can see it all in the big picture. And before the end of the night, you're gonna be a pro. <laughs> Let's keep it moving. Okay, here we go. And in a nutshell, don't pay too much attention about the radius of these hoops. We're more concerned about the width versus your components. I'm going to start over here with the 3 inch wide hoop, Nexus 3 hub with your standard cog, usually set up with the 2 and 3 quarter inch wide bottom bracket shell. 
European bottom bracket of 127 millimeters or five and a half inch American spindle. Four inch wide hoop, you're gonna go with the Nexus 3 hub and the offset cog, bottom bracket shell, 100 millimeters. European bottom bracket, also 100 millimeters or six inch American spindle. And lastly, the five inch wide hoop, you're gonna go with this Sturmy Archer, SA 170. This is a must for this hoop unless you go single speed. Bottom bracket, 120 millimeters or American spindle of seven to eight inches wide. They do make a European bottom bracket for this setup at 120 millimeters. You just gotta shop it down. Take it back to the office. Get all that. I noticed while doing the video editing that the bottom brackets looked kind of far away. So I'm gonna give you some closer shots here in the office. This here is the American style again, eight spline. This is a European style here. Again, square tapered. I give you a close up of the SRC3 hub, which is the standard 116 millimeter dropout spacing. I didn't give you a close-up of the SXRK3, which is the big boy hub here for the five inch wide hoops. And this here is the Nexus 3. Basically looks like this. Has a shifter bell housing that goes over the top. That's pretty much it. As for front hubs, that's a whole different story another episode actually but i'll give you some numbers real quick most standard front hubs are 100 millimeter dropout spacing which is most forks if you run a four inch wide hoop you're going to go with a wide hub be 115 millimeters wide now we're going to talk spoke count and gauge so let me go grab some wheels from the shop and i'll be right back okay here we go ready this here is pretty much a stock wheel with what they call 14 gauge spokes. Very common in over the counter bicycles. 14 gauge, 36 count, which is 36 spokes. When you go thicker in the gauge of spokes, the number goes down. So that's 14 gauge, 12 gauge, which is basically a step up, looks like this. This is a little bit thicker. When you jump from 12 gauge to eight gauge, that's a big daddy spokes right there. As for who can build these wheels, these wheels were built by Mark Deasy up at Sutter Street Cruisers up in Northern California. And I'm gonna show you a few social media pages of other wheel builders. Let's go ahead and take a look. First up, we have Mr. Warren Wong out of the Los Angeles area been in the industry for a long time. Crazy lace patterns. We think that he can probably do it. And we've got Dom out at the cruiser shop, San Jose, California. Full equipped shop. Builds not only wheels, but complete bikes. Got Sick Nick, local cycles out of New York. Nick's been in the game for a long time. Again, another storefront, if not the first nationwide, well over a decade. And then we've got Mark Deasy, Center Street Cruisers, also in Northern California. Another full equipped shop, building not only wheels, but complete bikes. And so there you go. There's a handful of guys that can build these wheels for you. There's several other guys out there building wheels, but these particular guys, I've been doing business with them for a long time. They've been around for a long time. They're pretty much like the godfathers of custom bicycles and I have no problem putting my name on any of them. Going back to spoke count, I was talking about 36 count. Usually when you go up in number, it doubles. So this is 36. The next one up would be like 72 count, which is what's on my green bike and my tail dragger. Double that. 144 count, which is very common and used heavily in the custom bicycle industry of low riders. Keep in mind, when you go big, big house, big car, more money. When you go big spokes, big rims, big hubs, more money. 
Don't be surprised when your wheel builder gives you a quote. You want to go big, you got to pay for it. That's pretty much going to wrap it up. Hope you enjoyed today's version of what's happening at Peak Cycles. And until next time, make it a killer day! Wheel widths, what hubs work and what hubs don't. This one does. <laughs> okay. Four inch wide loop. <laughs> you can't see me. <laughs> Moving on to the next size up. This here is a two and three quarter inch wide bottom bracket shell. American style, say American style because European bracket shells. <laughs> so here we go, you ready? This here, this way. <laughs> 